When it comes to watching movies, having a quality subwoofer can either make or break a home theater. In my theater room, I prefer large, powerful subwoofers for deep, tactile bass that you can not only hear, but you can also feel throughout your body. Today, I'm excited to share with you my review of a beast of a subwoofer, the 150-pound, 13-inch subwoofer from Monolith. The Monolith 13 provides impressive tactile output that extends down to 10 hertz in my room. Overall, I have a lot of great things to say about it, but it does have one issue which I'll share with you near the end of the video. So be sure to stick around to the end to find out. Now, before I jump into the full review, here's a word from today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an incredible online learning community with tens of thousands of classes for creators, business professionals, and people that are looking to learn new skills. They have classes on creative writing, film and video, graphic design, music, photography, website development, as well as entrepreneurship, leadership, and management and marketing. Now I've been using Skillshare for a few months now, and I'm currently going through a course with Thomas Frank called Real Productivity, How to Build Habits That Last. The lesson on perfect is the enemy of good was spot on. In it, he shares that by making many, many, many imperfect things, each time you learn something new. It reminds me of a quote, done is better than perfect. Every Skillshare class allows you to go at your own pace according to the available time that you have. I rarely have the time to sit down and go through an entire class, so having the flexibility to do a few lessons and then resume another day is perfect for my busy schedule. Most classes are under 60 minutes with short lessons to fit any schedule. Skillshare is offering to the first 1,000 of my subscribers that click on the link in the description one month free trial of Skillshare. Now, if you want to expand your knowledge and level up your skills, sign up for your free trial below. When Monoprice asked me if they could send me their 13-inch subwoofer, I honestly had no idea that it was going to be 150 pounds or I probably would have said no. Now, don't get me wrong, reviewing a massive subwoofer is a lot of fun, but it's also a lot of work just getting them unboxed and into place in my room, especially since my son is now married and no longer living at home. Now, two years ago, I reviewed the Monolith 15-inch subwoofer and put it head-to-head -head against the SVS PB16, which I'll link to in the card above. The Monolith 15 had some serious output and extended down to 10 hertz in my room. Now, I was anxious to see how a smaller driver with twice the amplification in a larger and heavier cabinet would perform. The first thing I did was disable Odyssey and calibrate the Monolith 13 using my Mini DSP 2x4 HD. After calibration, the first movie I tested was A Quiet Place. Now, if you don't have this movie and want some great demo content, definitely pick this one up. I'll share a link to it down in the description below. Now, I love using A Quiet Place to demo subwoofers because it's got some really deep bass. I wanted to see how the Monolith 13 handled those lower frequencies and would it be able to pressurize my 13 foot by 19 foot room with 10 foot ceilings. Well, needless to say, the Monolith 13 did not disappoint. There's a scene in the movie where she's hiding from one of the creatures in the bathtub. The creature places his hand on the staircase rail and when he did, I could feel the bass through my chair and into my back. Now that's the kind of bass that I'm talking about. Throughout the movie, there's plenty of LFE content to give the Monolith 13 a good workout. Even at times when I bump the volume up to negative five dB on my Marantz processor, the bass remained clean and put a smile on my face during each scene that I demoed. Now a few other movies that I demoed was Monster Hunter, John Wick 3, and of course the race scene in Ready Player One. Now in each of those, the Monolith 13 offered up plenty of outfit for my 2470 cubic foot theater room. Now in Ready Player One, I love feeling a powerful subwoofer when that wrecking ball hits the ground and then the building, and also when the dinosaur stomps, and my favorite part is when King Kong jumps from the tall building and lands onto the highway. Now since there's so much going on in that race scene, 
I decided to turn off my Monolith 11X amplifier, which powers all of my 11 speakers so that I could just hear the Monolith 13 by itself to see how clean it sounded on its own. Now I turned it up again to negative five dB, which is about five, maybe 10 dB louder than I usually watch movies at. The monolith was clean without distortion until just before King Kong lands on the ground. Now at that moment, I was able to hear some port chuffing from the subwoofer. Now it wasn't horrible, but certainly noticeable. With that said, I was not able to hear any port chuffing with the other 11 speakers playing, but I did want to note that in this review. Now, I was equally impressed with my go-to music demos from Hans Zimmer Live at Prague and The Greatest Showman. At the beginning of The Greatest Showman, the Model of 13 reminded me of its presence with each and every foot stomp. The bass was impactful, yet very controlled. Now before we look at some of the measurements of how the Monolith 13 performs, if you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you'd take a moment to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of future videos. Now keep in mind the measurements I'm about to show you are in my room. Your measurements are going to vary depending on the acoustics of your room. But this will give you an idea of how it performs in a real world environment. So let's jump into REW and I'll show you how the sub measures and also how it performs in various tuning modes. So here we are in REW, which is Room EQ Wizard. Room EQ Wizard, if you're not familiar with it, just allows us to take some measurements of a speaker, or in this case, a subwoofer, using a calibrated microphone. And in my case, I'm using a mini DSP U-Mic 1 microphone. So the first measurement I'll show you is with Odyssey turned off and no mini DSP settings you know, applied to try to correct any frequency issues that I have in my room. Now, anytime I measure a subwoofer in my room, I typically get these nulls. Most of the time it's right here in this range, somewhere between 40 to 60 Hertz. I've moved the subwoofer all around my room and I still get that pretty much no matter where I put it, but I'm limited in the floor space that I have available. So in most cases, you just have to work with what you have. So the next one I'm gonna show you is using the mini DSP, I applied a house curve and we did some uh, EQ adjustments. And so here you can see it pulled down all of these peaks right here, pulled down that peak there, pulled down that peak. You really can't do much with nulls. So if there's a lack of bass, you're just gonna have a lack of bass. That's not um, a reflection of any subwoofer. It just happens to be how the subwoofers um, interact with my room. So I'll go ahead and turn off the initial. So that's with the house curve. So that's about as good as I can get uh, with the subwoofer in this location in my room. So then the next thing I did is I increased the volume up to negative 10 just to kind of see, you know, how loud can we get this before we hit compression. And so then I increased the volume to negative 5 dB on the Marantz. Everything's looking good. When I hit about negative five, I began to hear a little bit of port chuffing. It wasn't too bad, but when I got to zero dB on the receiver, that's when the, the monolith really began to have a lot of port chuffing. Now, port chuffing is basically when the amount of air that's trying to escape the ports is too much for the size and the quantity of the ports. And so all of this air is trying to rush out and it can't get out quick enough and so it makes this kind of fluttering sound. So typically, I don't like to go above that. I don't know if it can damage the subwoofer, but as you can see here, we definitely did not hit compression. This subwoofer probably has a lot more output if you don't have the, the port chuffing, but again, I didn't want to go any further. But looking at this, you can see, we'll just turn these off. So at zero dB, which is reference, you can see right here, this has a really good frequency response all the way down to, look at this guys, 10 Hertz. Now, I didn't show the, uh, the graph below 10 Hertz because honestly, you can see it's already dipping down here. It dips down very quickly after that. So there's really no sense in showing below 10 Hertz. The subwoofer isn't even rated to that, but because it's in room, that's what we call, it's it's benefiting from room gain. 
And so we're getting a lot lower extension than even what Monolith claims, which is absolutely fantastic. But we're getting solid output down to 10 hertz. Now, of course, you can't really hear uh, bass content below 20 hertz, which is this region right here. But this you certainly can feel. That's that really, really low uh, infrasonics that, uh, you know, throughout movies that um, you just can't hear, but you can certainly feel it in your chest and the vibrations of your chair. And so overall, man, we get great output from this. Definitely really, really pleased there. The next thing I want to show you is I took three measurements of the different port modes. And so you can have this with all three ports open. You can close one of the ports. And then, of course, you can seal with all three ports closed. Um, and I'll show you what those graphs look like as well. So in what they call extended mode on the back of the amp, there's a toggle switch. One is for extended. The other one is called THX. And I'll explain when you use the THX in just a moment. But in extended mode, um, with all the ports open, this is the frequency response that we get. Now I'll go ahead and turn on the next one. So I, I closed one of the ports, so this, the center one. So I used the uh, included foam port plug. So I, once I closed that, took another measurement, and you can see what happens here. In uh, When one of them sealed, you get a little bit less output right here. So let's say from about 18 hertz to probably about 50 hertz. You can see there was just a little bit less output, but you get quite a bit more output in those lower frequencies, so below 20 hertz. Now my preference, I actually preferred in my room to leave it in the extended mode with all the ports open, which is this blue graph right here, because I did not feel that this was any lack of bass down here. That's plenty of bottom end uh, from 20 hertz down to 10 hertz. Uh, from my room, really, really enjoyed that. And really when it boosted that lower frequency, what I found in, in doing some testing, um, pretty much from somewhere about 30 hertz below, so it might've been like 25 hertz, that's really where the port chuffing was happening. I was able to go into the mini DSP and add a, uh, I think it's called a low shelf or a high pass filter. I tried it both ways. And basically what it does is it reduces the output. And I set it about, I had to keep going up until I got rid of the port noise. So once I hit about 30 Hertz, basically instead of this graph kind of coming straight over here and then going up or coming straight across, it kind of does this and it starts to decrease a little bit. And so that's where I was able to reduce those lower frequencies and get rid of that port chuffing. So that is an option, but I did want to bring that up during the review. So, and then the final one, and honestly, I don't know why anybody would buy a ported subwoofer, especially a massive ported subwoofer for that just incredible output, low end extension, and then seal it up. Um, but it's there for your pleasure if you want to, but I went ahead and measured that. Now, when you seal all three ports, that's when you're going to want to change that toggle switch on the back to THX mode. And so as you can see here, we have a lot less output down here in these lower frequencies. Pretty much everything else is identical. So pretty much from about 40 Hertz below is where you'll see the difference when you seal one of the ports or if you choose to leave them open or the third option which is to seal all three ports and so again i'll just go back to the original we'll undo those so this is where i chose to have it most of the time which is in this extended with all ports open and as you can see here i'll turn this one off at reference volume we got plenty of output here especially in those lower frequencies. Now, overall, the Monolith 13 is a remarkable subwoofer with a massive amount of clean output for $15.99. Now, as long as you don't push it to very high levels to the point of port chuffing, I believe that you're gonna be very happy with its performance. Now, this subwoofer is more than capable of rattling everything in your room and providing enough tactile bass to immerse yourself when watching action-packed movies. 
Now, if you like extreme bass, you might want to hold off for the Monolith 16, which will be available late September for $19.99, and it'll have about five to six decibels more output than the Monolith 13. Now, if you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe as I have more exciting home theater videos coming soon. And as always, you guys be blessed and we'll catch you in the next video.